Hi, this is Tim. Today I got a few thousand wires to crimp and I thought I'd just hit the record button and talk a little bit about crimp connectors and a few things that I see not done correctly in the field. Let's start with insulated terminals because they're pretty easy to understand. First, you're gonna have an end type and it may be a ring, a fork, a spade. There's all different types out there. And then for the ring terminals, you're gonna have a hole size and then you're gonna have a wire size. And the insulated ones are usually color coded to help you out. So in this case, all three of these have a number eight hole in them, which means they're made for like an 832 screw to go through. And then our yellow one's gonna be good for number 12 through number 10. Our blue one's gonna be good for 16 through 14. And our red is gonna be good for 22 through 18. And for the most part, you'll see that done correctly for the most part. But then we have non-insulated terminals. And these are a little trickier because same deal, you have a hole size and you have a wire size. And if you look close at a non-insulated terminal, it's gonna tell you the wire size on it. So this one is a 22 to 18 gauge wire terminal. This one is a 16 to 14 gauge wire terminal. But what I'll see, especially if you just run to the store and get these, in this case, we need a quarter inch terminal, but we want an 18 gauge wire, as you'll see people put just an 18 gauge wire into this terminal. And that's not right. There is every combination imaginable for these. And you can find a quarter inch stud for a wire size of 18 gauge. You can find every combination of them and you need to find the combinations of them. But also looking at our uninsulated terminals, if you look really closely here, you're gonna see this one has a gap going down it. And this one has a brazed end on it. So this one, the machine just folded it over and it's done. And this one, they folded it over and then they actually brazed it. Now I like the brazed ones, but actually both of these are UL approved, so they should both work just as well. Now most of you will probably just grab your wire strippers and there's some crimping thingamajiggers on here. And that's okay, like if you're out in the field, but really this isn't the best way to make a crimp if you're doing a thousand wires, such as we are. There is a tool for each one of these, and UL actually states that you must use the tool recommended by the manufacturer for the particular crimp. So in the case of our insulated crimpers, one, they're gonna usually have color codes on them to tell you which one you should put the wire in. And it is fairly uniform. It doesn't really matter which orientation you put it in. So we'll strip our wire, which maybe we should talk about wire strippers sometime, is there is a solid and a stranded indicator on here for each wire size. So I'm using 18 gauge wire. And I'm gonna strip it back. And then I will slide the insulated connector on and you can see the wire is just barely protruding out and that's what you want. And then we'll grab our crimpers and we want to put them right up flush and then we'll crimp it. And there you go. That is a good solid crimp. Also a good set of crimpers will not release until you fully crimp it. And I'll put links to these in the description. Now where I see a lot of problems is in the uninsulated ferrules. I'm gonna cut my wire and I will strip another bit. And then there is a completely different crimper for these. So on this one, our insulated one, it's fairly symmetrical and they come in pretty even. But on this one, it actually puts a divot on one side of the connector. And now the question is, which side of the connector should that divot go on? Well, again, my thing, especially since we do UL panels, is we go and look at the manufacturer and see what they say. And they're all gonna say that the divot goes on the side where you don't have the gap or that it's not brazed. But let's do it the wrong way first, just so we can see what happens. And so I am gonna put 
an unbrazed connector in the wrong way. So you can see there, my pointy part is right where that ferrule has its gap. And then I'm going to put my wire in and we'll crimp it. And you know, this actually is a decent, I mean, here's where using a good crimper uh, can make up for a lot of mistakes because that actually doesn't look horrible and it does hold, but it is not correct. So now I'll cut that again and strip another wire. And this time I have the divot on the opposite side of our gap. And I'll put my wire in, so squeeze it. And just even looking at these crimps, while that one didn't look horrible, this one, which is done wrong, definitely does not show the quality of the one that is done right. 